Welcome to the show once again. Now, just about every business is having to make changes to operations to either survive or appeal to their customers' needs, or in the case we're going to talk about today, to appeal to their fans' needs. Yeah, one such business is Southport Football Club, uh, hence the background you can see behind, who play in the Vanarama National League North. And up until 10 days before the season was due to start, they believed they would be allowed fans into the games. Then the news came through that fans would not be allowed. What did they do next? Yeah, they had hundreds of season ticket holders and members who had paid their subscriptions expecting to attend games that they could no longer go along to. And to give us all the full story of what happened next, we'd like to welcome Rob Irwin from Southport FC to the studio. Yeah, welcome to the show, Rob. Hello, thank you very much for having me in. Uh, it's good to have you. Now, all we know at this stage is that uh, live streaming was suggested to the board at the football club as a possible avenue to explore. Tell us more. What happened next? Well, it was all very rough, really, because as you say, we, we didn't have very much time to plan for it. And needless to say, a lot of other clubs were doing the same thing and they all wanted to get a camera. So that was the first obstacle we, we needed desperately to get hold of a camera. So you think it would be easy, but with lots of people trying to do the same thing at the same time, um, it wasn't that easy. We approached, um, we went on the internet, obviously, like you do, and tried to get lots and lots of uh, companies to come to us and see what was available. But they were all out of stock, no, no matter where we looked. But we found one company who were absolutely brilliant with us, and they were able to source a camera for us, um, but it wouldn't be until the end of October. So that was no good because our first game was on the 3rd of October and we had about two or three days to go running. So this company very kindly put us into ABC who sent us a loan camera and we were able to get up and running. So uh, part of this process must have been, you know, about your backgrounds, you, what you can achieve. If you're talking about streaming, I'm, uh, I'm suspecting that you, you're not all streaming professionals tell us a bit about the media team or if there is a media team at the club and the backgrounds and your experience in all of this where did it come from yeah far from being experienced every single one of us was a total novice we didn't have a clue we're all volunteers um and it was thrown thrown at us with such a short period of time to get it ready it was difficult to be honest um at first but we, we had some fantastic help from people around the country uh, the people again at JVC, the company that supplied the camera to us, and another football club guided us through what we needed to do, and, and they were really, really good, really. So it was good to uh, to get that support, which we couldn't have done without. But yeah, totally uh, volunteer media team. I made the mistake of actually saying, "Deliver the camera to my house." That was a big mistake <laughs> of my life because all of a sudden the camera came and it was Rob. Can you get on with it and get it organised and sorted? So it was it was, it was rather <laughs> difficult. I've been lucky, I've been retired yeah. for two years, so I was able to have a little bit of time, but I was not technically minded at all. Um, so it was a massive big learning curve, but we got a lot of support from a lot of people and uh, you know, we, we managed to get up and running. So did you, in the process of speaking to, um, or the people advising you, was there a short list of cameras to choose or was the natural thing to go for the JVC one that you ended up with? Yeah, we were we were recommended the JVC one by it was actually Scarborough, a club in a league lower than us. They they'd been using it, but what they said to us was to get the one the highest specification so we could put the score overlays on. So that's how we came about getting that camera. So it was a recommendation for the the JVC the the lower spec one. They said get this higher rate and then you can have all the score overlays, and that's the best thing we did because they are absolutely brilliant. It gives a really professional performance on the camera. And, um, you know, it, it, it's added so much to it to be able to have the score at the top and the time going. So it looks like, you know, not quite up to Sky Sports standards, but very much, up, you know, a very <laughs> professional look. And you find you can easily do, you can update the uh, the graphics and, and the scores all live very easily on the floor? Yeah, there. it's done live. Yeah, we just... Yeah, we just download. It's download. One of the girl, one of the media team girls, she puts all the overlays onto a little disc, goes into the camera, and then that feeds into another computer at the ground. So as a goal goes in, we can update the score straight away, uh, and the time and everything. 
the, the second game we did, we had a penalty shootout as well, believe it or not, which we lost, which we don't like to talk about, but we actually lost that game. <laughs> and, but we were able to put all the penalties going, as they were going in and getting missed, we were able to put the penalties in. And it was, it was absolutely fantastic. So, uh, you know, to, to see that working w- w- was really good. Mm. And who do you um, who do you stream through, Rob? Because I'm guessing this is a a subscription pay per view model that you're using, is it? It is. Yeah, we, we go through a company called Streaming Video Provider. Again, that was recomm- they were recommended to us um, as the company to use. There are plenty of options. Uh, we tried Streaming Video Provider with a little tri- trial, and it went fairly well. But the first game, because we were all new. The capacity we, we got more people in than we thought there were a few little teething problems at first but it, it, it went really well and you know they, they've been very good to us they've given us a lot of support but yeah they give us the option to to monetize it which is what as a club we needed to do to try and bring the much needed revenue in because you know it, it's crucial to us we're, we're not getting gate money we're not getting the money behind the bar uh, the people watching the season ticket holders get it all free so we need to you know build and, and get a good uh, backing for it so streaming video provider do that for us. They give us the chance to monetize it. Uh, it's up to us how much we charge. So we, we, we put a charge on it. Different clubs charge different amounts, but uh, we put our charge on it. Mainly to give the season ticket holders a feeling that they were getting the benefit by, they were getting it free and other people were having to pay. So, But it is still cheap, cheaper than the gate price. Mm. Um, but yeah, they've, they've yeah, been good. Um, but yeah, you, know, it, you know, I didn't know what an RTMP code was or anything when I first started. And all of a sudden, you <laughs> have to put all these details into the camera, which is once you've done it a few times, we wrote a guide out the first time and, you know, we've been able to follow it from there on in. And the last one we did on uh, Tuesday night, it, uh, sorry, last Saturday, was absolutely great. And we didn't have any complaints. It went out spit spot and we're, you know, it's our fourth attempt. And by the fourth attempt, we feel we've got it going really well. Hmm. Well done. Brilliant. And so that learning curve, did it involve, you know, you went to other clubs for for um, for help and guidance in, in, in the, you know, yeah. choosing the technology, the training, whether it be the camera or the streaming, did you use other clubs? Did JVC help? Did, you know, did you did you have any other help? Who did you turn to? Yeah, we, we again the the gentleman at Scarborough, Mick in Scarborough. He he was our first port of call. He he he. We did a Zoom call with him at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning before we were due to go live, and it was a mad panic because we we just didn't know if it was all going to properly work. But uh, yeah, we, we went through Mick. We, we've used a lot of the tutorials. There's some fantastic tutorials on the JVC site, um, which we, which we've used. Again, you had to follow it to the letter, miss out one little bit and everything would go horribly wrong. So it was a few a few attempts until we got it. But I'll tell you, the moment we saw that camera go live with a stream going out, the relief we all felt is, oh my goodness, it's actually worked. And you know, it was, I felt quite a sense of achievement really, because as a, being a non-techie person, to see that actually go for the first time, you know, we were so relieved and it, it was really good to see. Yeah, it's all, the joys and the stresses of live television, isn't it? So, um, from a yeah. from a from a practical point of view, um, whereabouts on the pitch or the stadium is the cameraman standing? Are you mounting it on a tripod? Um, and are you wires are you wirelessly connected to to your internet as well? Yeah, no, we, we mount it just beyond the halfway line. Um, it, it's it's more or less halfway, but not quite. Um, and it's on the, the stand where you can see the stand behind you there. It's just just in the press box area up there. Um, it's a we, we put, what we found is by plugging the router in direct an Ethernet cable directly into the camera, that's giving us a really good reception. Uh, we haven't had a down a, an outage at all of the internet, which we were worried if we were using a dongle, we may get that. Um, you know, we've used dongles in, on some occasions in the past, and not always the most reliable connection. But by using the Ethernet direct to the camera, to the router, the, the, the internet connection has been perfect. I've got to be honest, you know, the, the second game we did, uh, we did find a few issues because we were, we were playing Hereford and within five minutes leading up to the game, there was over 200 people tried to log on at the same time. And at that point, we were doing it through our website. So it caused a crash on the website, and that that was a little bit annoying because we had a big audience that night. A lot of money had been paid, and we did. We've got to be honest; there were a few complaints, but we pulled it round. We had to switch it over to YouTube for the second half to make sure that everybody could see it, which we were able to do again through the camera. Just put a new code into the camera, and we were able to do that. 
Um, so there were a few teething problems with that, but it's a lesson learned, and we switched the platform directly over to the streaming company after that, and it's worked every much better since then. Mm. And so are you seeing, I mean, I, interesting you say that, your viewers are coming from uh, probably, you know, your own, your your your, um, uh, your season ticket holders will be will be logging on, one, one, one yeah. hopes, and maybe some of your other supporters will come in. Are you seeing other viewers coming in, the, the people you're playing? Yeah, that was the big thing against Hereford. It was that the main audience was Hereford. And on Saturday, we played Chorley, which is a local derby for us, and that would have been lovely to see the fans in. We'd have had well over a 1,000 people in the ground, but... We were able to put yeah. the stream out, and at one point there was over a thousand people watching. Which for us, it might not sound a lot to the big clubs, but to us, that is absolutely fantastic. But what, what we've noticed as well, we've we've got viewers all over the world. We, we can see who actually, by looking at the the analytics at the end of it, we can see who's watching. And we've mm. had people from Qatar, Australia, America, Denmark, Japan, everywhere in the world. It's just amazing why somebody in Japan would want to sit and watch a. A Southport football match against Chorley but we're loving it and to, to see that going out and some of our exiles you know that live down in London that don't always get to the game they think it's absolutely brilliant because they can now see the games mm. but that they wouldn't even be able to get to even if we're allowed fans in so that that bit has been fantastic for them so some people are saying can we keep it going forever but I don't think our board would be too keen on that because we want people in the ground obviously eventually once we're allowed to let fans in again yeah that was my next um the question really is that yeah. when you are allowed fans in there, can you can you maybe see yourself carrying on and maybe adding another camera and developing the whole the whole um because I mean you can't be actually being in a game and whether it would put people coming off, you know, coming to the ground in person or not, but it is giving the what the wider audience a you know a chance to see the games, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. And we, we have had a lot of people, we've got, you know, obviously there's a few disabled fans who can no longer make it to the ground. And they, again, they think it's absolutely brilliant because they can now watch Southport Football Club playing live, which they wouldn't have had that opportunity to, to do in the past. So whether we'll continue, I, I don't think um, the board would want to do that just at the moment. But it's something, if we could work a way where we could have a, a season pass for people who are unable to get to the games, as I say, we have got a lot of exile supporters uh, all over the country. You wouldn't think so for Southport Football Club, but we do have a big <laughs> following all around the country. And they are, as I say, they are loving it. My own daughter lives in, in, in Surbiton. She can't get up all the time. She's watching all the games and she loves it. We, you know, we brought her up at Southport Football Club and, you know, she's loving it now that she has seen every single Southport game. And the good thing, of course, now we'll be able to watch the away games ourselves because a lot of other clubs are doing the same thing. Mm. Um, but I think I think I still, you know, I, I comment. I was actually in commentary on Saturday as well, and I commented at the time. There's nothing like having fans in in a big local derby. You know, you miss that atmosphere, and you know, I, I want to see fans back in the ground as soon as we're possibly able to. I, I do miss it, and you know, the, the, the streaming is brilliant. But to see, you know, the ground with plenty of people in, I would love to see that back. And the sooner we can do it, the better. But realistically. I can't see it happening for a while, so we'll uh, we'll carry on with the streaming, which uh, everybody is enjoying. Um, you mentioned that JVC uh, helped, um, uh, you know, JVC helped by giving you a, a camera up front whilst the one you were buying. Who helped you arrange that? We should probably give them a plug. Yeah, it's a company called CVP. Um, they, they were the we just did a, we just did an internet search. We found CVP. Every other company, honestly, it, they just sold out. We just could not get hold of one. But we found this one just luckily. We pursued it, and they, they were fantastic setting it up with G, um, with JVC. And I, I can't say enough about the people at JVC with John Kelly and Mike Turner and Katie Hand getting it all sorted for us. They, they, you know, I don't want to overdo it, but we couldn't have done it without them and got up and running. So, Rob, we're going to finish off before we let you go. We always ask our guests on the show, um, a bit about them, a bit of background information, nothing to do with their day job. You said you've been retired for two years, so I'm sure you've got some interesting stories to tell us about yourself that maybe even your colleagues at Southport Football Club don't already know about you. Yeah, I don't like to admit that I was a, a, an HR manager of HM Revenue and Customs, really, and that, that puts a lot of people <laughs> off talking to me straight away. And since I married somebody who was a tax officer at the time as well, we, we, we used to get banned from lots of parties because of our, our tax implications. But I, th I think the thing is, that, you know, the, the story I always tend to, to try to tell people, I was actually born in Hull 
1958. And um, the reason I came, the, my first ever Southport game that I saw was Hull City versus Southport in the FA Cup. At that time, I hate to admit it, but I was a Hull City fan because my dad was a real keen Hull fan. Unfortunately, my mum died in 65. Right. So I was a, you know, my dad remarried a, a girl from Southport. That's how I came to Southport. So I always have to hate to tell people, but the first game I saw Southport play, I was uh, actually a whole city fan. So uh, yeah, I, I, don't, city fan. I, I shouldn't admit that, but a few people do know that now. But it's something we, we, we talk about now and again. <laughs> it's, uh, it's out now. That's it. You know, yeah, yeah. And, uh, both both secrets are out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thanks very much for watching today. And thanks to Rob from Southport Football Club for coming on the show. To see all our video interviews, kit reviews and more videos like this, then head over to kitplus.tv, which is brought to you with the support of Media Proxy. And you can find out more about them at mediaproxy.com. Thank you again.